counterfeit. Uh, and the definition it gives for counterfeit is to make an imitation or copy with the intent to defraud or deceive. So the biggest thing we're looking at here is that the devil intentionally deceives people. It's not an accident. Like Nick says, you, you don't just accidentally make a fake dollar bill. You have to, to plan it out. You have to be very strategic with what you do. So what, what that, that comparison really says is that the devil is going to get so close to showing people a very similar image of Jesus, but it's just going to be a little off. And that's going to draw people away from who he truly is. It's going to stop people from hearing his word and receiving everything that he has from. Uh, it says here in, in John 8, 8, 44, he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature because he is a liar and the father of lies. So every lie that's trickled down to today's day and age starts with the devil. And, and, and that's where we're going to go to next here. The enemy is the counterfeit king. His ways are not of truth. Um, so we're going to 2 Corinthians here. This is, this is where it all started right here. So, um, but I am afraid that even as the serpent beguiled or, or manipulated Eve by his cunning, your minds may be corrupted and led away from the simplicity of your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For you seem willing to allow it if one comes and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. And that's what I'm talking about. They're going to preach a, a slightly different Jesus that comes to supposedly do different things than what he has said he's come to do. Or if you receive a different spirit from the one you have received or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you tolerate all this beautifully, welcoming the deception. So as I said, this started with Eve. She was given God's word and she was entrusted with it, just as Adam was, and she was manipulated by Satan. So if it can happen to her and Adam in the garden where everything was perfect, it can definitely happen to us. So we really got to dig in. We really have to understand who Jesus is if we want to stop this from happening in our lives. Uh, the enemy creates counterfeit doctrines to deceive. But why? Why? Uh, if perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. And I talked about this on Wednesday. What his plan is, his sole plan is to draw you away from, from God and his will. And, and, and our goal here with preaching the truth is that we may by God's grace be granted repentance for being manipulated and we may be able to get out of his ensnarement and to be able to really do God's will. That's our goal. It's not just to come here Sunday. It's to find out what his will is and to walk it out in our daily lives. So the big question is, who taught you all that you believe? I've been taught by a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of different things, and a lot of them weren't good. Um, so until, until I found out who Jesus really was, I was led, I was led astray. I was led astray by a lot of different things. Um, musical uh, people I looked up to in music, um, you know, the whole 60s movement of free love and, and peace. And all sounds so good on the surface, but when you really dive into it, you can see Satan's work and all of that. He, he draws, draws everybody away that he can. So who taught you all, the, all that you believe? I want to be taught by the Lord this morning. Amen. All right. It says in Psalm 24, Psalm 25, verse 4 and 5, make me know your ways, Lord. Will you say this with me? Make me know your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Amen. There's only one truth, and it's Jesus. Amen. I love, I love what Nick says here. Um, God wants to teach us the truth so that we may walk in it. And it's not just sit in it. I just don't want to sit in his truth. I want to walk in his truth. We have a scripture for that too. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. This is one of my favorite passages. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is to come. So that, like, like Nick says, there are nuanced things in our lives that, that we may not have a perfect written description of what we're supposed to be looking for. But if you have the spirit of truth and you walk with the spirit of truth, you should be able to discern. And that's our goal here, to have discernment. My discernment's been growing in this series. I hope that yours has too. I hope you've been seeing some things that are just a little off. And I pray that we can all, all receive that this morning. So our worldview is not what shapes the Bible. It is the Bible that shapes our worldview. So you have to hold on to your Bibles with everything you have and really dig deep into them. Um, that's right. I'm, I got my iPad this morning just so I can stay on track. But yeah, I love the paperback. And also I switch between translations. And I don't, want, I don't want to be in the King James all morning. I know you all don't like that. So that, I'll, I'll save that for home. But so the, the, the thing that Nick says here, counterfeit wisdom 
Wait, that's not it. Okay, here, we're going into my message now. That was Nick's message. We're going into my message now. So the thing I have to talk to you about is counterfeit wisdom. And what I was really thinking about, um, counterfeit wisdom will try to convince believers to elevate their thoughts above the word. And and I really, yeah, for real. What, what really hit me is um, counterfeit wisdom. It can lead to self-glorification. If you believe that revelation comes from your own spirit and not God's, you're really going to be led astray very quickly. Uh, you're going you're gonna to get big-headed, you're going to get arrogant, and you're going to really make the wrong decisions. I know when I lean on myself for my own understanding, I'm, I make the wrong choice every time. So believing that revelation comes from within leads you to be in opposition with God. I don't believe that any of us truly want to be in opposition with Him, but that can seem to happen very quickly when you start to lean on yourself. And I was reading, here's a, here's a tip. Um, I had all my message together, but I still continue to read the Bible. So that I found something that I really loved. Um, it's in Romans 8. So I'm going to hit you one time with the King James. Because the, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And I was like, this word enmity, what in the world does that mean? Enmity, the state or feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. It really hit me. It says the carnal mind is enmity against God. So what that really made me think of is the counterfeit wisdom. The counterfeit wisdom that the world gives is going to put us directly in opposition with God. And the counterfeit wisdom that we receive in our own revelation when we, we do things like manifest and all that stuff that people are doing today, it's going to lead you to be in complete opposition to the Lord. We don't want to be there. We don't want to be there. Um, so after that, I'm going to go to... Um, Romans 12, uh, we'll do do that first, let's do that. The carnal mind is at enmity with God. We have the spirit within us, as Lauren said, so we should be in unity with him. Everything that we do, we should be walking, he should be walking right beside us and we we should let him do that. It says in Romans 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So if we're avoiding the carnal mind and we're really seeking the truth and the spirit of truth, it's going to lead us to his acceptable and perfect will, right? Yeah, so do not be conformed to the world. There's always going to be some new trend about um, how to be wise and how to seek wisdom and how to find wisdom. Everyone's got something on Facebook to say about wisdom, something that they want to tell you that they've done. It's a good thing for them. But unless it comes from the word, I'm not going to listen. And I pray that you wouldn't either. So the Bible is our tool to discern and rebuke the false philosophies of the world. We can no longer sit back and let these things just take hold of our society. It's, it's going rampant. There's a lot of things that people have latched onto, um, like the My Body, My Choice movement, things that are, are directly in opposition with God. And, and I'm going to tell you, the church is letting it happen. If we're not speaking up about this stuff, it's going to continue to happen, and it's going to be on our hands also. So that's something that I don't want. Ryan, and I, I know you don't want this either, man, so we're going we're gonna to stick to this together. Me and Ryan are always texting about this kind of stuff. So it feels good to have him over there. Um, so if we're going to go to another verse. I'm just going to keep giving you the word here so that you know this isn't coming from me. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So he already knows the devil's schemes. He's going to reveal them to us. And if you're looking, you're going to see them and we're going to have the opportunity to take action against them. And I believe that when we do get to heaven, he's going to say, good job. Thank you for following my truth and thank you for standing on my word. It says here in Isaiah also, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So he's telling us, do not rely on yourself. Do not pray to yourself for revelation pray to me and i'll give it to you i give wisdom freely and and yes exactly i give up an abundance of wisdom to those who ask of it um so those who exalt themselves or embrace this counterfeit wisdom will always be brought low in the end that's really what i'm going to show you i'm going to give you a warning from the beginning that anyone who sets themselves up against god is going to be brought low in the end i got another verse in isaiah here woe to those who call evil good and good evil. He gives us the warning. There's going to be people that are going to be saying things like abortion is good. That's obviously evil, but they're calling it good and they're twisting that and they're making you feel shame about the fact that you stand on the truth. 
So we have to keep doing that. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. Woe to those who have counterfeit wisdom. So I have um, an example here of someone who is received by many, many people to be the wisest person of our age. Um, and I just wanna observe the thoughts of a man who believes he is full of wisdom. The world celebrates his mind, philosophies, and beliefs. Um, nothing against this person other than the fact that he set himself up against God and he's given me the opportunity to, to show you an example of what it really looks like for someone who's uh, so full of arrogance that they actually think they have a better idea of creation than God does. Um, this is a, a Stephen Hawking quote. Um, most of you probably know who he is, uh, an extremely intelligent person in the world's eyes. Um, but what that wisdom of the world does is it blinds you to God's truth and it makes you so full of arrogance that you can't see beyond your own, your own self. So what he said here uh, is because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. I, I think people that, that rag on our faith, they believe that there was nothing and then it exploded. So I think that takes way more faith than it does to believe in a risen Savior. Amen? Spontaneous creation is the reason there is something rather than nothing. While the universe exists, while we exist, it is not necessary to invoke God to light the blue touch paper and set the universe going. Wow. I think it continues on here. The fact that we human beings, who are ourselves mere collections of fundamental particles of nature, have been able to come this close to an understanding of the laws governing us in our universe is a great triumph. What he's saying is kudos to me for thinking that I can figure everything out, and I'm just so proud of myself for what I've done. Uh, this is someone who set themselves up entirely in opposition with God. It's one thing to be, to be neutral, but to literally say, I have found out how the world was created, and we're just mere collections of particles of nature. That's just so arrogant, it, it makes me want to throw up. So I pray that that disgusts you also, and it, it leads you to the truth that is, we, we, we believe in a seven-day creation, amen? That's the truth we hold to, and we're going to stand on it. And um, so many people throughout the world hold his words above the creators. A man whose wisdom is in direct opposition. So that's scary. Many people have been led astray. Um, many people in the, in the sciences and the, the physics um, have totally just taken this and, and run with it. And they believe that we're just, um, our ancestors are bugs, which is also, how much faith do you have to believe we came from bugs for crying out loud? So I believe the seven day creation, God created us and by his good grace, he granted us everything we have today. Amen. Um, so I have a scripture here in Romans. Uh, Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the, the, than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So everything God created is supposed to lead us to him. When we look at the stars, we're supposed to see him in them. When we look at the universe and they show us these pictures, whether they're real or not, we're supposed to believe that God created that, not man, not um, just the, the Big Bang, which once again makes no sense how there was nothing and then it blew up. Um, so why are there so many counterfeits that promote wisdom? That's the question that we really, that, that Nick and I wanted to, to pray about and to think about and to share with you guys. Um, and, and really what I believe is, like, like I said, it, it feeds our egos. Um, it says here in Galatians 5, 17, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. So God's written his law on our hearts and it's in there. Uh, if we're not blinded by the world, we can actually do the things that we want to do, which is his will. Uh, the enemy creates so many counterfeits because worldly wisdom feeds our flesh nature and leads us away from God and his perfect will. When you believe that everything you're doing is, is of your own accord, it's, it's because you're awesome and great, you're not going to look to him. You're not going to look to him in anything that he's doing. You're not going to pray about the next step in your life. You're not going to wonder what I should do without praying about it. You're just going to step into it and you're going to continually have your ego built. And that's a dangerous place to be because when you fall, you have nowhere to turn. You have nowhere to turn. So what is real wisdom? I feel like I'm flying through here. Am I going quick? A little bit? Okay. Okay. I'll try and slow down. But I'm really just, I've been praying a lot because I know how, how blind I was to the truth before and how led astray I was and how far off I was and, 
and how everything that I was doing was leading me to dishonor everything God's word says. I was dishonoring to my parents, um, which is one of the first commandments he gives us. And it tells you that he'll be, that you'll be blessed if you follow that commandment. I, w- I wasn't doing that. I'm just so thankful. Uh, my beautiful wife's here in the front. And without, without God's perfect will, I would have never found her. So yeah, by the grace of God, I, I met her and um, she led me to the Lord. So he used her for that. And I'm just so thankful that I, my eyes were opened and I just, I, I get really sad when I think about people whose eyes are closed or people that even know some of the truth but are, are being led astray. That really frustrates me. So that's why I wanted to share this with you. I hope you all receive that. Um, so we're gonna see what real wisdom looks like. We're gonna look to the word, um, the word of truth that reveals wisdom to us in so many different ways. Uh, we're going to look at a, a worldly king who wants to impose worldly wisdom on God's children. So if you have your Bibles, I would like you to open up to Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. And we're going to look at someone who um, had all the reasons to, to look to someone other than God, uh, whether it was out of fear of, of his life. Um, but what he really did is he stuck true to the word. And we're going to see how he did that, why he did that, and, and what happens when you do do that. <clears throat> So Daniel chapter 1 starts out, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put treasure in the house of his God. So if you look, he's already, this is already someone who's starting to, to take things that are not his, uh, things that, are not, that he was not blessed with by God, And he's he's trying to use him for his own good. So Nebuchadnezzar has no regard for the one true God. That's where we start out. And that's honestly not everyone that that walks in counterfeit wisdom starts out that way. But that's where you always end up. It continues on. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. These are the people that God has set out, and he's made them perfect. We're, we're going to go back. We didn't finish that up. But these are people that, that God created for his perfect will, and, and you can even start to see right away that, that Nebuchadnezzar is realizing how perfect these people are that God created. And that's really going to be the theme of this story. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. So he's trying to take God's people and he's doing exactly what I said. He's trying to twist them and lead them away from where they were. He even changes their names, which all, all three of their names were made to glorify God. He gives them a new name and he's trying to take what God has given and he's trying to use it for his own good. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years and after that they were to enter the king's service. Um, Something that stood out here, even a pagan king saw and acknowledged that these men of Jerusalem were full of wisdom and they were set apart. So the world has the ability to see God through you. If you do these things that that, that Daniel and his his companions did, they were set apart. They were living healthy. They were reading his word. They were living the way that he had called them to do. And the world's going to see that as they did here so long ago. Uh, The law was within Daniel's heart and he walked in wisdom based off the word that establishes wisdom. So no matter where he was, whether it's before, after, or during this situation, he's walking with wisdom, and Nebuchadnezzar is seeing that. Among those who were chosen, some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, the chief official gave them new names. Like I said, their names glorified God, but he's going to change their names. Uh, Daniel's name became Belteshazzar, uh, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Funny story real quick. Um, I worked with this kid, and he said he was going somewhere called Shadrach. And I was like, you mean Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And he's like, what is that? <laughs> I was like, read your Bible, man. Come on. For real. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. So he's walking in wisdom. He's seeing something that uh, the world wants to use to corrupt him. He catches that right away. And he said, no, I'm going to ask with permission uh, if I can do this differently, and I'm going to really stick to what God's given me. Obviously, God's given him wisdom in this situation. Now, God had caused the official to show favor and companion to, compassion to Daniel. There it is. He's, he's caused him to have compassion because Daniel was walking in his ways. I love that. I love that. 
Um, I am afraid of the Lord my King who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. So he didn't trust yet, but he was going to see the goodness of God through this. Uh, heavenly wisdom will always look foolish to worldly minds. That's what I really, really got out of that. He didn't understand yet, but Daniel knew what he was supposed to do. I love that. Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your, servant, your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. Where do you think Daniel got the idea of this test from? He received it in wisdom. I love that. So we can walk with confidence when we receive heavenly wisdom. We can stand on his truth. I mean, I, I don't think it would be comfortable for him to stand up and, and, and make this... Um, make this idea known to the king. I, I want to go against what you're saying. He could have had his head at any moment, but he was walking in faith and he was trusting the Lord. And that's what heavenly wisdom will really allow you to do. It'll allow you to have confidence in what you're doing. So at the end of the 10 days, surprise, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. And I will go as far as to believe, um, you know, Jesus said he is the bread of life and man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of him. So I know that Daniel wasn't just eating vegetables. He was praying and he was receiving his word and it was filling him to overflowing. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead also. So he's following after God's ways. The king's heart is being changed so quickly by Daniel and the faith that he has. I pray that we can be that in our world today. I pray that we can do things according to his ways and that it'll turn all evil to the Lord. I pray that it'll turn their hearts and their eyes to see him for who he truly is and, and how set apart we truly are. Like Lauren said, everything that comes against you, he's gonna turn it for good. So I pray that you would allow that to happen in your life. Um, you all know what we went through and, and we allowed that to happen. We could have taken it into our own hands. We could have done what was totally okay in the world's eyes. But we sat there together at Mad Max and we said, we're gonna do this, we're gonna, we're gonna keep her. <clears throat> and we're really gonna walk in his ways. And I pray that he blesses other people through that. And, and I pray that we pray that he saw that God was seen through our steps of faith in that situation. And we've heard so many stories of that happening. Um, so praise be to him who, who got us through that. And I, I love that, that people have said that they, their lives have been changed by our baby. So. I'm excited for this new baby on the way, so I'm ready for that. I want you all to be with us in that too. Amen. So like I said, he turns everything for good. We got a healthy one on the way, so we're ready to go. God is good. Amen. Uh, to these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. That's wisdom, being able to interpret things and, and to be able to see things from God's eyes. That's true wisdom that was poured out on him. God will pour an abundance of true wisdom on those who are willing to follow it. I love that. Dig in deep every day. Not every day has to be perfect, but if you take one step closer to Christ, he's gonna meet you right there. I pray that we do that after this message. So at the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them and he found none equal to Daniel. You're, you're gonna be so different than everyone around you that, that people are gonna say, he, they have to be from God because the way they're walking is so different than the way we are. The faith that they have in situations that would just break us down, I don't know how, I don't know how they handle that and they're gonna ask you that and you're gonna have to point them directly to the one who made you. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. That's crazy. He had so many people that were set up in positions that were giving him wisdom, that the world was giving wisdom to him. And, and within this small time period, he realized that Daniel and his companions were 10 times better, 10 times better. So a worldly king, a man in direct opposition of God, could not deny the wisdom that God had given to Daniel. What a powerful, powerful account here we see of people who walked in faith, even in the darkest of, of times when they were literally in captivity. They just stayed true to the word and they stayed true. How free are we? And we, and we can't do this. What, what's, what's the deal here? Why can we not stay true to his word? I think it's because we take advantage of the, the freedoms that we've been granted. And that's why I said this morning, I, th I think we really need to step back and, and remember how we're here. Um, the most powerful part of Memorial Day is that these people purposefully laid their lives down for us. They knew that they were gonna die. Just as it says, for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. These people were thinking as they ran onto the, the bays of Normandy, they realized, 
I'm doing this for these future generations, not for me, I'm not gonna be here, but there are people that, that are gonna be down the line that I wanna make their lives better by laying my own life down. So I just pray that we can realize the freedoms that we've been granted and the opportunities we have to walk in God's ways here in freedom. It's a heavy responsibility, but we can do it together in faith, right? Amen. So now I'm gonna tell you what wisdom is not after we looked at that perfect story. I'm gonna show you what wisdom is not. I'm not gonna hold any punches. So wisdom is not just taking a straw poll from your closest friends and family. Does everyone know what a straw poll is? Okay, you're kind of just, you're going around and, you're, and you're, you're searching for that confirmation bias. You wanna talk to people who are gonna give you the right answer. When, you, when you're going to do something, you don't wanna hear what, what, what God really wants you to do. You already have an idea of what you want and you're gonna to go to those people who you know are gonna tell you, yeah, that's a good idea. That's not what true wisdom is. And I know it's human nature to ask first those who will give you the, the right answer, but we really have to seek God in prayer and you have to wait. So I have a, I have a story. We were looking at a house and um, we looked at it and I thought it looked great on the outside. And, and, and uh, yeah. yeah, so Chris, our realtor, he's like, so what's the next step? Um, I asked him what the next step was. And he's like, all right, we need to pray. And I was like, I've been praying. So I, I, I was not truly obedient in that moment. And, and luckily by God's grace, he diverted us from that house because it was a mess underneath everything that they had done. But that's just um, an example of how we can so quickly, based on something we want, step into it and even, even say, I've been praying about it. No, I was praying, but I had not had confirmation on that house. And I was walking it out based on my own, my own bias of just wanting to move. So that, that's something that you can, you can learn from. When you, when you want to pray about something, you really have to pray. Yeah. And you really have to pray. And you really have to pray. And you really have to pray. And then you really have to pray again. So take your time in prayer is my main point there. Um, it says in 2 Timothy uh, verse 4, 3 and 4, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. I feel like we're there right now. There are people that are just so quick to take on any bit of, of information that they can. Uh, Nick, Nick showed us that video at the beginning of, this serv uh, beginning of this series of that man who was entirely twisting God's word to fit his own view of what the Bible was about. And people are so quick to do that today. They're so quick to be deceived by things um, because they have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. That's the church he's speaking to. People in the church will be so quick to listen to things that aren't truth but make them feel good inside that they'll completely miss who Jesus really is. That's really scary. That's really scary. I pray that it doesn't happen here in our church. I, I'm so thankful that Nick searches the truth every single week. He brings us a word that's full of wisdom and he really sifts through it and, and really says, well, God, what do you want me to speak this week? And I pray we have to continue to intercede for him on his behalf, that he has peace in his time when he reads so that he can continue to receive wisdom so that this church is never led astray. Amen. Amen. Second one, wisdom is not trusting your heart. Oh, oh, people got that tattooed. Yeah. Trust your heart. It sounds amazing, right? It sounds amazing. But the Bible has something different to say about the heart, doesn't it? Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Whoa. That's not a tattoo there, is it? No, not, not one that the world would get for sure. But it's so true, though. The things that rise up out of our hearts that aren't from God are usually so evil and so wicked and they lead us directly in opposition with him. So I pray that you would not trust your heart, but you would trust the living word that is Jesus. Amen. I pray that you would look to him for understanding and wisdom and you would not trust yourself. Don't trust yourself. Trust him who created you. Last one here. Wisdom is not found anywhere but God. It's not found in a yoga studio. It's not found in secular books or secular websites or people that, that don't know him. It's only found in the Bible and it's found through prayer. Uh, Deuteronomy 18.9 really speaks to these, these uh, things that we're seeing in our day and age today uh, with the manifesting and um, the witchcraft and all of that stuff that's so quickly taking on our youth and corrupting them. Uh, it says, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. What's that sound like? Anyone who practices 
divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens. You know, we had someone that was very close to us. That their family actually led us to the faith, uh, but she was pulled away and she was into to tarot card reading. And, you know, luckily Kate was able to stand firm in that. And she said, that's not from God. You're being led astray. And um, the relationship was severed, but we couldn't let someone who we looked up to lead us astray like that. It was hard, but we had to do it. it it's just not from him. Um, she even said, uh, I had a dream that, that Jesus wanted to change the church and that the church right now isn't, isn't, um, isn't working and, and he has new plans. And I'm like reading this message and I'm like, wow, how, how can you be so led astray from someone who was so close to the truth? Um, but it tells us right here that that's going to happen. Or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the blameless before you, the Lord your God, for these nations which you are about to dispossess, listen to fortune tellers and to diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. So I pray that we would not be deceived by these things, uh, even though they may sound new and hip and cool and trendy and popular on TikTok. I pray that we would stick to the word that's never changed. His truth has been the same forever since he wrote it, and it's never going to change, and we need to stand on it, and it's going to be fruitful and a blessing to our lives and to our hearts and to our futures if we just hold fast to the things that he's told us. Bonus. <laughs> Bonus. Here we go. Here we go. God has revealed himself so that no one may have an excuse for seeking wisdom outside of him. God has revealed himself so that no one may have an excuse for seeking wisdom outside of him. All creation can see that God is there. They deny it in their hearts. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them. Like I said, look at, this, look at the stars, look at the trees, look at the mountains. Do you think this stuff all just happened by accident? I can't believe that, but people do. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So this creation itself is a, a pronunciation of God's goodness. And it, 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 like it says, if you don't worship me, the rocks are going to cry out. The rocks are going to cry out. They have the ability to worship me because they knew who made them. The rocks know who made them, but some people don't. Isn't that a shame? So they are without excuse for all. Although they knew God... They did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts, don't trust your heart, their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. What a shame. The truth is written on their hearts, but they deny it because they want to build their, their ego, their self-esteem, and they want to just... Like Stephen Hawking says, I, I believe that I can find out how things were made and how things are done. So my goal here is to, re to remind you that God has revealed himself to you and to all the people that you come in contact with. So just try and remind them, whether that's by just praying for them, by sending that text message and, and sharing the truth with them. God's given us so many ways today to interact. We, we can't use that as an excuse. We have to step into what he's provided because the devil uses social media. I pray that we use it too. I pray that we can use these things for godly purposes. So counterfeit wisdom will try to convince believers to elevate their thoughts above the word. That's, that's my point here today, that counterfeit wisdom is going to lead you to be in direct opposition with God, and that's what leads people astray. So I pray that as a church here, we can come together and we can just stand on the truth, and we can take on the day's um, troubles and, and trials and problems, and we can stand on the truth knowing that he's with us, right? Yeah. Amen, amen. So I'm going to pray for you all before we leave. Um, if we could all bow our heads in prayer. Uh, dear Lord, we thank you for your truth this morning. We thank you that you've given us the ability to hear true wisdom. Lord, I pray that you would just pour it out on us, Father. I pray that as your word says, that it would not re return void to you, Father. I pray that a seed is sown into these people's hearts today, Father. I thank you for using this service, Father, to bring your truth. I thank you for who you are, Lord. I thank you that you are wisdom, that you've given us every opportunity to see you in this creation, Father. So I lift up every, unbelievable, every unbeliever, Father. I pray that... Through our words and through your creation, Father, they may see you and more people may come to know your truth and your word and be saved by you, Lord. I just thank you for who you are.